Hello, and welcome to our video covering the second half of section 4.2, isomorphisms. Yep, that's what I said. Okay, let's start with an example. So remember from maybe the last video, but definitely from class, uh, the space of two by two matrices, A matrices can be written A, B, C, D. Uh, this is denoted R two by two. Uh, so recall the space and recall that it has a basis uh, of four matrices, one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero. Okay, I'm not gonna like just say ones and zeros um, for the rest of those, you can, you can see. Uh, so, okay, we've got this space of matrices. It has a basis of four ba basis matrices. And it's a basis because we can write A, B, C, D as a linear combination of these vectors. A times vector one plus B times vector two plus C times vector three plus D times vector four. And so since we can write this matrix as a linear combination of these basis vectors, we can write the what's called the coordinate vector of this matrix in this basis. We take the coefficients of the basis vectors or the coordinates and we write the coordinate vector. And now let's consider this process as a transformation itself. So it's a transformation that takes as input a matrix in R2 by 2 and gives as output its coordinate vector in this basis. And this is a transformation from R2 by 2 to R4. So all right, let's give us some more space. So what do we know about this transformation? Well, it's linear. You proved that in class last time. It's also invertible. Um, and the inverse, you can just uh, read it off. If I give you some coordinate vector A, B, C, D, you know exactly what matrix it came from. So it's linear, it's invertible. And really, if you think about it, it's just rearranging the scalars. It's taking the entries, A, B, C, D, and instead of writing them in a two by two array, it's writing them in a list. And so what this is kind of showing us is this transformation, since it's linear and invertible, you can go back and forth. Really, it's telling us that R2 by 2 and R4 carry the same information. It's just in a different format. It's the same entries, just listed differently. And when you get something like this, kind of two spaces having the same information, but just formatted differently, uh, and parties mathematicians would say something like, well, R2 by 2 and R4 have the same structure. And at work, we would say that R2 by 2 and R4 are isomorphic and that this transformation, this linear invertible transformation that takes a matrix in R2 and spits out a, a coordinate vector in R4, that that transformation is an isomorphism. So this is from the Greek. Iso means same. Morph means, mm, your book says structure, but I'm like, is that really true? Anyway, uh, who knows? Uh, probably no one. Anyhow, uh, so let's, let's look at this definition. So an invertible linear transformation is called an isomorphism. All right, so invertible linear transformation. Not enough to be linear, not enough to be invertible, you gotta be both. But if you have both, then that transformation is called an isomorphism in the two spaces that it's linking. So V, um, if it goes from V to W, then V and W are isomorphic if they are linked by an isomorphism. So the takeaway here is that isomorphic spaces are essentially the same from a linear algebra perspective. And isomorphisms, the transformations between vector spaces, these tell you when two vector spaces are the same from a linear algebra perspective. And importantly, coordinate transformations are isomorphisms. And this ends up being a huge idea so let's see a consequence of this idea that coordinate transformations are isomorphisms. So recall that this P2, this is a space of all polynomials of the form f of x is a plus bx plus cx squared. So all polynomials of degree less than or equal to two. And we've seen that this space has the basis 
1 x and x squared. And so our coordinate transformation that takes a polynomial of degree less than or equal to 2 and spits out its coordinate vector, since a coordinate transformation is an isomorphism, this is saying that we have an isomorphism between P2, the space of all two <laughs> polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2, we have an isomorphism between that and R3. And so the space of all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 2 is isomorphic to R3. And that's awesome, because we know R3 really, really well. I mean, we have met its parents level of well. And what's crazy is that these seem like very different spaces, like a function space and a the space of list of numbers or just 3D space that we, um, like if we want to think geometrically of R3, the fact that from a linear algebra perspective, R3, the space that we live and breathe in, is isomorphic to a function space, that's wild. Now, since differentiation and integration are linear transformations, we've seen that. Um, part of the reason we've seen that already is that these are extremely important linear transformations. Um, but since they're linear transformations, we will see that these transformations in, okay, in the space of polynomials, that's a like transformation on functions. But actually, that corresponds to matrix multiplication in R3. And this is a big deal. So let me um, reinforce this. Uh, so in theorem 4.2.3, this theorem that says coordinate transformations are isomorphisms. So if we have some basis, f1, f2 to fn, if that's a basis for a linear space v, then the coordinate transformation that takes a vector and spits out its coordinate vector, so whatever the coefficients on the linear combination of these basis vectors is, that that's an isomorphism. Thus, V is isomorphic to Rn, and the linear spaces V and Rn have the same quote-unquote structure. And what this is saying in like real terms is that any n-dimensional vector space is isomorphic to Rn. This is wild. Just, yeah, sure. Function spaces, spaces of matrices, spaces, spaces of uh, sequences, finite dimensional sequences, any n-dimensional vector space. If it satisfies the vector space axioms and it is finite dimensional, it has n dimensions, then that vector space is isomorphic to Rn. And any linear transformation that we do in that abstract vector space will have some corresponding matrix transformation in Rn. This, this idea has tons of applications in the real world. Just, I mean, the main ones that come to mind are like data compression and uh, signal processing and filtering. Like, you like watching uh, streaming videos. Yeah, it uses this idea. It uses the idea that, okay, you can start with some signal that's represented by a function, and this function can be represented by some n-dimensional function space. And then we say, all right, well, in order to be able to do some filtering, we should have to do some integration. And so you do some integration, but what you do is you just translate everything into Rn, you hit it with a matrix, and then you translate back, boom, there you go. You've just done all of this complicated stuff in functions and function land as really exquisitely simple calculations for computers to do in Rn, namely matrix multiplication. So if you remember this uh, meme that I showed on the first day of class that uh, I am proud to say that I made, um, you are here. We are, we are now at the point of what isn't linear algebra? Like, hopefully I just convinced, convinced you that somehow calculus is linear algebra. Um, this is, this is the biggest idea that we are going to see in this class. So in one sense, the class has peaked right now. And that would have been a great note to end on.
But uh, I'm actually going to yeah, finish up by talking about some properties of isomorphisms. So first, I'm going to start actually with the last few properties because they deal with just finite dimensional spaces, which is 99% of what we're going to talk about in this class. So, okay, in parts B through D that we're about to look at, we're assuming that the linear spaces V and W are uh, finite dimensional. So the first property you're going to talk about is this idea that if the space V is isomorphic to W, so there is an isomorphism between them, um, oh, that the space is isomorphic if and only if they have the same dimension. So I think one direction of this is like, I don't know, obviously I, I hate saying that, but in terms of like, what does it mean to be isomorphic? If V and W are isomorphic, have the same structure, they're basically carrying the same information, but just in a different format, then yeah, they better have the same dimension. So starting from here and going to the same dimension, that's, um, it would be surprising if that was false. Uh, the other direction saying that if these two vector spaces have the same dimension, then they are isomorphic. So this is saying that any two finite dimensional vector spaces with the same dimension are isomorphic. That is very surprising. And that's kind of the like big idea to kind of blow your mind in this section. Next, um, okay, suppose we have some linear transformation from V to W where the kernel is zero. So kernel of zero right away, this should like send off uh, bells ringing in your head that they're, oh yeah, if you have a n by n matrix where the kernel is zero, then it's invertible. Uh, and yeah, something similar is going on here. If you have a matrix or a linear transformation between abstract vector spaces where the kernel is zero, and if the spaces have the same dimension, so like, you know, n by n matrices or dimension n to dimension n vector spaces, then the linear transformation is an isomorphism. And remember, isomorphism is a linear transformation that's invertible. So this, this tracks. And then uh, finally, suppose you've got some linear transformation from V to W where the image is the entire space. Then again, if the dimensions are the same, then we have an isomorphism. And so this is the idea like, okay, well, the linear transformation is already going to be one to one. And if it's also on to, then uh, like if, if you hit everything and um, no two things are sent to the same thing, then okay, you've got an invertible transformation. And if the dimensions are the same, then you've got an isomorphism. And so now let's talk about what is different in part A, which allows for infinite dimensional vector spaces. And this is mostly just for funsies. Like we're not really dealing with infinite dimensional vector spaces in this class. It's cool stuff, um, but just yeah, beyond the scope of this class. But okay, uh, your book includes it and I, I think it's cool and it's fun. So let's look at it. So, okay, suppose you have maybe a possibly infinite dimensional vector space V and maybe an inf possibly infinite dimensional vector space W. This says that if a linear transformation t from v to w, or that a linear transformation t from v to w, it's an isomorphism if and only if the kernel is zero, not surprising. And you also need the image to be all of the target space. So let's contrast this with what was it, c, where if we're in finite dimensions, you have a linear transformation where the kernel is zero then, okay, if the spaces have the same dimension, you have an isomorphism. Not true in infinite dimensional spaces, necessarily. You can have two infinite dimensional spaces. They've got the same dimension. Trans linear transformation has a kernel of zero, but you can have it such that the image is not all of your target space. And in that case, you won't have an invertible function. And so I leave you with a challenge and it's just for fun but try to come up with some infinite dimensional vector space and some linear transformation from the space to itself, such that the kernel is the zero vector in that space, but the image is not 
the whole space. So come up with a reason why we need this. Your challenge is to come up with a linear transformation where the kernel is zero, but it's not an isomorphism. Okay, see you in the next video.